Good morning. People are asking for whatever reason um, if my dad or my family was ever or is or was ever in the FBI. The answer to that question is no. Um, to the best of my knowledge, the only family member that I have that has ever been in law enforcement of any kind uh, was my mother's father, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather. He was a cop in Iowa for a period of his life. I don't know exactly how long. To counter that out, though, he also ran booze during Prohibition for a while. So <laughs> he was a he was a man of of, of many jobs. And no, I don't think he did them concurrently, although he may have. I don't know. I don't know where the uh, where the idea that my dad or any member of my family was ever in the FBI came from. I think that people may be confusing me with Hemming, because I think Hemming's dad was FBI or CIA or something. I don't I don't really follow it, but people seem to make a big deal out of it a while ago. So there were there were allegations that Hemming's dad had something to do with the JFK assassination or something. It was it was it was somewhat absurd. So I didn't follow it. I don't know the exact details. I'm sure that somebody somewhere will have videos on on it. But no, my my family is not now nor has ever been. FBI, at least that I'm aware of. And when I say that I'm aware of, I'm talking about my brothers. I don't really keep up with uh, cousins or grand cousins or anything like that. So you'll have to you'll have to forgive my lack of knowledge on that. I'm sure somebody somewhere, if you go enough six degrees of separation, will come to the uh, conclusion that. I'm lying because somebody somewhere far enough back or far enough removed is law enforcement. But all I can say is I'm not aware of them. So there you go. Uh, what else? There was another thing I want to talk about. I want to talk about um, demanding cops' names. That's That just seems... Uh, it doesn't seem to be a very useful thing to do. It puts the cop on edge. It puts the cop on notice of the kind of person you're going to be and the kind of interaction they're going to have. It certainly doesn't do anything to de-escalate the situation. I don't know really what it's going to help you. If the cops do generate a police report, their name will be on it. So there you go. Um, I have a feeling it comes from... Um, you know, like I said, in this community, there's a lot of people who are disaffected because of their past interactions with the police, i.e. negative interactions, i.e. being arrested for criminal behavior. So I'm sure that it just tickles their wieners that they get to demand the ID from the cop. They get to have some degree of power over a cop, I guess. It doesn't, it doesn't help. Um, I, I fall back on the same advice that has been repeated so often. Uh, shut your pie hole. Don't talk to the police. If you're the victim, talk to the police. If you're the perpetrator or a suspect or the cops is trying to get information and you get, you get even an inkling that the cop may be trying to get information about you. Don't talk to the police. There's nothing good that can come of it. Then let's talk about the video I did on Freeman and his speed trap, the blind corner. I put, it's amazing to me. I'm getting people commenting, or at least one person commenting, that the uh, that it was a curve. Well, I never said it wasn't a curve. It is ever so gentle of a curve. Most people would consider it to be a straight road. There is the slightest curve in it. 
it's not blind. It's not a blind corner. The allegation that that uh, Freeman had made was that it was a blind corner. It's not a blind corner. It's not a corner. It is the ever so gentlest of curves. I even put a link in the description to Google Maps, the street view, so you can see that it is almost an imperceptible curve. The, the officer was by no stretch of the imagination hidden. It wasn't a blind corner. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to insinuate it. Beyond that, it's ridiculous to insinuate that cops make money or even towns generate revenue off of tickets, off of speeding tickets. There's a, there's an argument going on in the comments on that video where people are valiantly trying to turn policing for profit via speeding tickets into policing via profit for civil asset forfeiture. I have said, and I will maintain, that there's a huge issue with civil asset forfeiture. It should be unconstitutional. You should not have your property taken from you without a trial. I mean, seized for, like, evidentiary purposes, fine. But seized until you prove that you're not guilty or you prove that your money wasn't used in a in a drug operation or something, that's ridiculous. That is unreasonable. I think it violates the Fourth Amendment, but, you know, the courts don't agree with me on that, so what am I going to do? But, but don't muddy the argument. The argument that Springer was making, that James Freeman, James Springer, was making was that Police in small towns do the speed trap to police for profit. That they generate profit off of speeding tickets. He didn't provide anything to support that. No one has yet provided anything to support that. I made a video a long time ago about the uh, the Tennessee. It was, a ten, it was for some reason I don't I don't remember why I made the video, but it was on the Tennessee um, their version of the Highway Patrol, and I showed I showed their expenses compared to their revenue generation, and it wasn't even close. Tens of millions of dollars more than what they generated. They spent tens of millions, and that's just at the and that's just at the police level. That's not getting into the courts and the, uh, the the time and money that judges and lawyers, like state paid lawyers, defense attorneys or whatever, court clerks, all that fun stuff. It, it doesn't take into account any of that. Policing is not a profitable enterprise. Now, I'm sure there are going to be allegations and news stories of some town somewhere that somehow managed to <clears throat> generate a profit off of it, and that's great. Um, let's let's remember that exceptions aren't rules, and that we were talking about small towns generating profit off of speeding tickets, because that was the that was what was being discussed in the video. That was being discussed in the video. That's what James was discussing. So that's what I was discussing in reference to him. And and does the, the officer not giving the um, speeder a ticket, does that prove that they're not that they're not doing it for profit? Absolutely it does. Absolutely it does. If they're doing it for profit, you would take every piece of the pie you could get. It's not like sales where you may give a you may give a discount or a freebie to try to get the guy to come back not it's, it's stupid and what a, what people also tend to realize this does not apply to civil asset forfeiture because you don't have to break any law for civil asset forfeiture but I bet you I bet you count on, on one hand the percentage of uh, speeding tickets that the person wasn't actually speeding less than 5% probably a lot less Generally speaking, 
if you get a speeding ticket, you're speeding, generally speaking. And so, generally speaking, if you don't want to get a speeding ticket, don't speed. I haven't, I haven't gotten a speeding ticket in... I don't even remember how long. I don't even remember how long. Maybe 20 years? Somewhere around 20 years. Because I don't speed. Well, actually, I do speed a little bit. But you know what I mean. I go with the flow of traffic-ish. So it's a voluntary ticket if you want to pay it. I think that's all I really had to cover. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.